Hey there, today we is the last day of our solutions unit. Um, today we'll talk about electrolytes and, and neutralization reactions and do a little bit on uh, oxidation reduction reactions. So an electrolyte is something that produces um, electricity when it's in an aqueous solution. So when um, ionic, uh, ionic compounds, acids, bases, when they are dissolved in water, they dissociate, so they come apart and they conduct electricity. Those solutions conduct electricity. So that's why we call them electrolytes. Um, electrolytes dissociate in solution and they form ions. Now there are three different types of electrolyte compounds. Um, salts, like sodium chloride, will dissociate into sodium and chlorine ions. Um, acids, like hydrochloric acid, is uh, will dissociate into hydrogen and chlorine ions. And then bases will dissociate into sodium and hydroxide ions. Those three types of solutions, um, when they dissociate, form electrolyte compounds. And those compounds will be able to conduct electricity. Um, something to remember, a covalent molecule does not conduct electricity because it doesn't dissociate. Those bonds are held together through sharing. Remember, covalent bonds share electrons. They share electrons, so they don't dissociate. They won't break up. Okay, Only those ionic acids and bases will break apart um, and dissociate. Um, all the compounds here, uh, we're going to determine whether or not they will dissociate into water. Well, so first compound here, PO3. That's a covalent compound because phosphorus is a nonmetal and so is oxygen. So that will not dissociate. That won't form an electrolyte. Gold 3 chloride, well, gold is a metal and chlorine is a nonmetal. So that's an ionic compound. So gold chloride will definitely dissociate and become an electrolyte. Magnesium hydroxide, well, that's a base. Since it's got that hydroxide on the end, I know that that's a base. So that thing will dissociate and form an electrolyte. Carbon dioxide will not break apart and form an electrolyte. It's a covalent compound. Down here, next row, hydrochloric acid. Well, it's an acid, so acids dissociate and form electrolytic uh, compounds or electrolytic solutions. So hydrochloric acid is definitely going to dissociate and become an electrolyte. Um, iron bromide, iron 3 bromide, yep, that sure will because it's an ionic compound. Aluminum hydroxide. Is a uh, base with that hydroxide on the end. Aluminum hydroxide is a base, so it will dissociate and become an electrolytic solution. Carbonic acid, an acid, will dissociate, so that will form an electrolyte. So will sodium chloride. Well, here we have sugar, C6H12O6. That will not dissociate. It's a covalent compound. Same with SO3, covalent, so won't dissociate. This last one, potassium hydroxide, is a base. So these ones that are in red are all those covalent compounds. Everything else, everything else that's not in red will dis dissociate and become an electrolyte in solution. So a neutralization reaction is when we mix together an acid and the base, and a base. Um, and it affects the overall pH of a solution. So when, when you mix an acid with a base, they can neutralize one another. For example, um, if I mix uh, 100 milliliters of something with a pH of 5 and 100 milliliters of something with a pH of 9, what do you think that resulting pH would be? Well, I'm mixing an acid with a pH of 5 and a base with a pH of 9. So if I mix those together, they're going to come closer to the middle to that 7. So 7 is close to what that pH should be. Um, next example, if I have a neutral solution, so the solution is neutral, that means it has a pH of 7 and I add a solution of unknown pH. The final pH is now a 10. Well, 7 plus an unknown solution becoming a 10, that thing was definitely a base. Um, solution A has a pH of 11. When I add solution B, the resulting pH is an 8. Looks like it went down from 11 to 8. Solution B had to be, right, more acidic. It was an acid. The complete reaction of a strong acid and a strong base will produce that neutral solution. It's a fancy um, double replacement reaction is basically what it is. It's a type of reaction called a neutralization reaction when you mix an acid with a base. In a neutralization reaction, um, acids and bases will react to make two very neutral 
get the word that's where we get the word neutral solutions we get water and we get salt okay remember salt is just an ionic compound we don't necessarily mean sodium chloride every time remember that only NaCl is um, the actual table salt that's not the only salt though remember that we can call any ionic compound a salt okay so here we have hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide strong acid plus strong base and what do they make they make NaCl because it's a double replacement you have sodium bonding with chlorine hydrogen bonding with hydroxide so sodium chloride is a salt plus HOH which is really just H2O and that's water so that's what a neutralization reaction would look like acid plus base will yield salt plus water every time just do that double replacement reaction okay if we have hydrofluoric acid plus potassium hydroxide the potassium and the fluorine will bond and we get a salt called potassium fluoride and then we get H and OH bonding H and OH is just water sometimes it's easier to leave it as HOH for balancing purposes just a suggestion okay these are all the different types of reactions that we've learned we learned a synthesis reaction is two or more elements that combine to make a single compound we learned that a decomposition reaction is when one single compound decomposes into smaller parts into its simpler substances a single replacement reaction occurs when one element replaces another one in a compound and then that double replacement reaction is where we have those atoms that switch partners or trade places okay these are what the reactions look like the only one we didn't just talk about was combustion remember combustion we have that hydrocarbon plus oxygen and it always makes carbon dioxide and water combustion reactions are nice because other than the balancing can be complicated um, they always make the same products that hydrocarbon plus oxygen is going to make carbon dioxide and water one of the properties of acids that we learned is that they react with metals to produce hydrogen gas kind of neat so if I mix hydrochloric acid with a metal pick a metal in this case we're just going to pick magnesium this is a single replacement reaction magnesium is higher on the activity series than hydrogen so it'll kick hydrogen out and you'll get hydrogen gas and then you'll have a resulting salt after that you'll have magnesium chloride okay so it's kind of neat Adults or acids acids plus metals will produce hydrogen gas plus a salt okay so let's look and see what types of reactions these are so number one so I have a single and a single making one compound right that's a synthesis reaction HF plus LiOH well that's hydrofluoric acid plus lithium hydroxide that's an acid base that's a neutralization reaction because look what I get I get the lithium fluoride salt and water next reaction number three is what right this is a, com a combustion reaction here's my hydrocarbon plus oxygen and it yields carbon dioxide and water number four sodium chloride plus potassium fluoride that's two compounds neither one of them those aren't acids or bases so this is just a simple single replacement reaction okay, or, sorry double replacement reaction it's a double replacement reaction where they switch partners sodium bonds with fluorine over here to make sodium fluoride and then potassium bonds with chlorine to make potassium chloride number five number five looks like a decomposition reaction I have a single compound as the reactant and it breaks down into its pieces last reaction what do you think that is well it's hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide which means yep it's a neutralization reaction okay real quick we're gonna go back I think we've already talked about redox reactions but if not this will be a uh, it should be a fairly easy lesson for y'all um, so an oxidation re reduction reaction is also called a redox reaction you try to say oxidation reduction reaction 30 times a period six times a day it gets complicated so we just break it down we make it simpler it's just a redox reaction so this video has some notes I'm gonna go ahead and play the video it's only a few minutes only like two minutes but he's gonna talk a little bit about um, how to about these uh, redox reactions
making sure my speakers are on for you, just in case. This video is an introduction to oxidation reduction. Oh, they're not on. Hang on just a we minute. We often abbreviate oxidation. Pause you. Okay, I unpaused you. I fixed it. I had my um, my sound off. So now we should not have the sound off anymore. So I'm going to play this uh, this video real quick where he explains redox reactions. This video is an introduction to oxidation and reduction reactions. We often abbreviate oxidation and reduction, so we just call these redox reactions for short. So what is an oxidation reduction or a redox reaction? Here's a quick definition. In oxidation and reduction reactions, electrons move between atoms. Check out this diagram here. We got atom A and atom B. And there's an electron moving out of atom A into atom B. So this is definitely an oxidation reduction reaction because there's an electron moving between the atoms. Now we can describe the movement of this electron using the words oxidation and reduction. So let's learn specifically what both of these mean. Reduction is a gain of electrons. I know this seems kind of confusing because usually when you have a reduction of something, you have less of it. We'll talk later about why a gain of electrons is called a reduction. But anyway, reduction, gain of electrons, and then oxidation, which is a loss of electrons. So we got reduction and oxidation. What's happening to atoms A and B over here? Well, atom A is giving up one of its electrons. It's losing an electron. So in atom A, oxidation is taking place. Atom B is receiving an electron. It's gaining an electron. So in atom B, reduction is taking place. Now, we can modify these words slightly to come up with terms we use to describe what's happening to the atoms. Atom A is undergoing oxidation. So we can say that atom A is being oxidized. Atom B is undergoing reduction. So we can say that atom B is being reduced. So we got oxidation, oxidized, reduction, reduced. Well, looky there. There we go. So um, oxidation uh, or redox reactions. In an oxidation reduction reaction, electrons move between atoms. Now we see this. We talk about this when we um, talk about a lot of ionic compounds. Um, when we bond magnesium and chlorine, magnesium um, has an oxidation number of positive two because it loses, gives up two valence electrons. And then to the, the two chlorines will receive or take those electrons. Okay, so magnesium in that case would be oxidized. Chlorine would be reduced because reduction is a gain of electrons. It does, it, it is kind of confusing. Sometimes it feels backwards. Um, reduction is going to be a gain of electrons. Okay, that's what is gaining the electrons. That would be the negative ion. Negative ions are gaining electrons. Positive ions are losing electrons. So those are what's, um, what is being oxidized in these reactions. Every oxidation reaction, uh, redox reaction, um, will have not only an oxidation portion, but a reduction portion. Electrons that are lost by the reactant are gained by the other reactant. Okay, electrons don't just run off into space and never come back. If an atom loses electrons, then it makes sense that something gains those electrons. Okay, so we have uh, a little uh, way for us to remember oxidation and reduction. I write this all over my paper when I'm doing um, redox reactions. Um, I remember oil rig. Um, oxidation is, is losing electrons, so OIL stands for oxidation is losing or oxidation is loss of electrons. RIG stands for reduction is gain of electrons. Okay, atoms become more positively charged, so the positively charged cations are oxidized. The negatively charged anions are reduced. Okay, another quick video, just for another couple minutes, let him explain this again. Okay, so this is the process where we start from electrically neutral atoms, we have an electron transfer, we get ions that then stick together. So here's the equation that I showed you earlier that describes this process. There are a couple things that I could add to this, though, to make stuff a little clearer. 
Check out these numbers that I've written in here in the red. These are called oxidation numbers, and they give me a sense of what's happening with the electrons and with the charges. So above Na and Cl, I've written zeros. That indicates that these two atoms start out being electrically neutral. They have no charge. That's what the zero means. Then on this side of the equation, once the sodium and chloride have taken on charges, I put those charges above each element. Plus 1 for the sodium, and then minus 1 for the chloride. These oxidation numbers help us keep track of how charges change during a reaction. Most importantly for this reaction, they remind us that sodium and chlorine start out neutral and only end up getting a charge later after this electron transfer takes place. So, that is oxidation numbers, and we'll talk more about those in coming lessons. So, so obviously, obviously this, this is an oxidation reduction reaction because, because there is a transfer of an electron between these two atoms. I now want to describe what's happening to sodium and chlorine using these terms reduction and oxidation. So just to refresh your memory, reduction here is a gain of electrons and oxidation is a loss of electrons. So for sodium, what's happening? Is it being reduced or is it being oxidized? Well, sodium, sodium is giving up one of its electrons, it's losing an electron, so it's being oxidized. Here's, Here's the diagram of sodium giving up that electron. electron. Now chlorine, on the other hand, is receiving an electron. It's gaining an electron, so chlorine is being reduced. So, so there we go. Let's see if I can get past this one. Oh, there we go. Sodium in this reaction um, is the positive ion because it's giving up an electron. When it gives up an electron, when it loses an electron, it's oxidized. Remember OIL, oxidation is lost. Chlorine has a negative charge because it gains an extra electron. Okay, when something gains an electron, it's reduced. Okay, so chlorine is my rig. It's my reduction is gain. That's how I remember. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Here we have an, a re, uh, redox reaction. Magnesium plus sulfur yields magnesium sulfide. Well, you all know what happens here. When magnesium bonds with sulfur, magnesium loses two electrons. It gives up its two valence electrons to sulfur. Sulfur is happy to take its two valence electrons because then it will have a full valence shell. Magnesium lost two electrons to become the magnesium cation. That is my oxidation portion. That's my oxidation half reaction. Magnesium becomes magnesium with a plus two charge when it gives up those two electrons. Then we know that every oxidation reaction is paired with a reduction. So sulfur is what's reduced. Sulfur gains the electrons. Sulfur is changed from sulfur with no charge. And look, you get some extra electrons here, two extra electrons. So it has a negative charge. So it has gained electrons. We say that magnesium is oxidized, sulfur is reduced. Okay, again, one more picture. Magnesium loses its two electrons to become magnesium plus two when it bonds. Sulfur gains the two electrons, and then they bond together to be magnesium sulfide. So let's try to practice this. We're looking, try thinking of it simple. Whatever is positive, whatever becomes positive, has lost electrons, so that's oxidized. Whatever is negative has gained electrons, so it's reduced. In the reaction, magnesium plus chlorine yields magnesium chloride. What element is reduced? So reduction is a gain of electrons. Negative ions have gained electrons. Which one of these do you think would be negative? Right, chlorine is negative, so chlorine is being reduced. In the reaction 2K plus F2 yields 2KF, what element's being oxidized? So oxidation is loss of electrons. Let's look at this compound here. Which one of these elements, potassium or fluorine, loses electrons? Right, potassium loses electrons. It becomes a plus one ion, so that means potassium is being oxidized. Number three, in the reaction three, strontium plus nitrogen yields strontium nitride. Which element is being reduced? Reduction is a gain of electrons. Which one of these uh, elements in the compound, either strontium or nitrogen, gains electrons and has a negative charge? Yeah, nitrogen. Strontium has a plus two charge because it loses two electrons, so it's oxidized. 
Nitrogen, however, is the element that's being reduced. Neutral sodium forms an ion according to this reaction. So neutral sodium is right here. And remember, when neutral sodium loses one valence electron, it has a full valence shell underneath. So it forms the sodium plus one ion when it does what? Right, when it loses an electron. So what is what do we say? Is, uh, is it oil or is it rig? It's o oil, oxidation. Sodium is oxidized because it loses an electron to become a positive ion. Okay, redox reactions are very important uh, in biochemistry. Remember ATP and mitochondria? Yep, that's a lot of redox going on. Okay, just a real quick video for you. You can more than welcome to watch. Um, five ways to speed up chemical reactions here. Um, shrink the container or increase concentration. Okay, if we increase the number of particles, that will also speed up a chemical reaction. We can speed up particles by adding heat and breaking up clumps into individual particles. That will also speed up a chemical reaction. Also, we can use a catalyst. That's something that gets the reaction going without actually taking place in the reaction. So, kind of feels a little disjointed, but it's okay. It's a little extra information for you at the end. So, I hope you had fun. Um, this is the last video of this school year. Thanks. Have fun. Have a good summer.